You are listening to the Effective Entrepreneur Podcast, Episode 8, Actions Matter, with an asterisk. Hey there, happy Monday. How's it going? Are you killing it this autumn, if it's autumn for you when you're listening? I hope so. I recently purchased this new kettle that I'm super stoked about. It's an electric kettle with a goose neck, and it has all of these settings for different types of brewing, and you just press the little button, and it warms your water up pretty quickly to that temperature, and then you can just pour it in. I've been making a lot of matcha lately, so now I can just pour it into my matcha and make my matcha with my oat milk foam from my foamer, and it's been really nice, and it has an app that I need to set up that I could have it programmed at different times to warm up water. I also could have it so that I could just press it from my office to start heating up and I don't even have to go all the way to the kitchen and wait for it there. It's like I'm living in a new age. (laughs) So I'm excited about that. I hope you're having fun with whatever warmer drinks, or if you're in the other hemisphere and getting warmer, whatever colder drinks you're wanting to have right now. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how actions matter with an asterisk. (laughs) This asterisk means that it's a like a footer note, you know, that says that they matter not as much as you think they do. So actions matter, just not as much as we as humans normally think that they do. And when we're talking about actions, we're not talking about like how we treat others or like that kind of action right now, although we could be talking about that. I like to believe that how we treat others totally matters. But what I'm talking about specifically here is what we do to create our goals or what we do to create revenue or what we do in our businesses to create mini goals that we might have like in launches or product launches or whatever it is that we're working on creating or we might be thinking we're trying to create, which I always correct my clients when they say, well, this month I'm trying to, like, well, we know you definitely aren't in belief that you're going to create that then, which we're going to talk more about belief today. But if you're anything like me and my clients, when you want to go after a goal or creating something new, especially in your business, you probably immediately go to thoughts about the actions in order to create that goal. So you might be thinking things like, but I don't know how, or when would I get it all done, or there's so much to do already, or, but I'm already doing more than I want to be, or I'm already exhausted. All of these kinds of thoughts attribute the creation of whatever it is that we're talking about. So things like higher sales, a launch, a new product, scaling, whatever it is, to what is to be done or our behavior. So the focus really here is our minds go to what do I need to do in order to create that goal? which is not the most optimal place for us to be placing our attention, but it's where we usually go by default. It's also one of the main reasons why we have a lot of time drama when it comes to goal cultivation, because we also believe what we do will take time to create it. So we go off when we're considering creating something new, we go and think that it's what we're going to do, the actions we're going to take. And then we also think that all of our actions that we do take time. And so these two things combined really block us from all of what I like to call the magic and possibility of what we could create if we were to believe that it's not 100% the actions 
that it's still totally possible for us and that we have more than enough time to create whatever it is that we want to create. All of the thoughts that I listed off about the actions really showed us the real reason why you would not create your goal with that thinking. And it's because of a lack of belief. So it's really that our belief will ultimately create anything that we want or not create anything that we want if we lack this belief. So now you're asking, well, Lauren, you keep mentioning belief, but what is belief? What do you mean by belief? Well, if we go back to episode five, we talked about what thoughts are. And thoughts are sentences in our mind. We have these automatic thoughts that we unintentionally think that we notice and see and can observe with awareness so that we know that they're there. And then as we notice them, then we can potentially let them go if they're not in alignment with what we want to create. And then we also have thoughts that we can think on purpose in order to create and become somebody new who creates new goals. We can really guide our minds to thinking what we want to think in order to create those goals. Where beliefs come in is that beliefs are just thoughts that we keep on thinking. So these are almost like the more cemented sentences in our minds. These are, I like to think about it as like a Jenga. Have you ever seen this? A Jenga game? I'll have it linked in the show notes in case you haven't heard of this before. But I really like to think of beliefs as like a system like a Jenga game. So it's like the whole tower. The belief is the whole tower. And then all of our thoughts that make up that belief system are these little blocks. And I will talk to you about this probably more in the podcast, but essentially we don't need to dismantle the whole belief system by moving each and every little block one by one from the top to the bottom off of the tower in order to get the tower to no longer exist. What we just need to do is poke holes at each thought, each block, by pulling each block out throughout the tower We won't end up needing to move all of the blocks or all of the thoughts that are a part of this sort of belief system in order to dismantle it. We just need to poke enough holes, remove enough thoughts, or question enough thoughts, enough of these blocks, that eventually it'll topple over much more easily. So belief is a thought we keep on thinking It's like a cemented thought, and usually it's like this foundation. In the Jenga example, it's like this entire tower made up of all these other almost smaller thoughts, not that thoughts are bigger or smaller than any others, but if we have a belief like there's not enough money, we would label that like scarcity mentality, like this whole Jenga of scarcity it might show up then in little thoughts throughout our life, like I need to work more in order to make more. There's only enough for so many people to go around, other things like that. It'll show up in little ways and little thoughts, like I need to save my, I don't know, all my leftovers and I can't throw any food away or something like that. Like it'll show up in different ways. Anyways, your beliefs are just thoughts that you keep on thinking, essentially. So when we are thinking things like, but I don't know how, then we are going to block ourselves from all of what is available to us for how we actually could create it. We go into not knowing, into doubt, into the unknown instead of creating the known with our minds that there actually is a way to create this, I'm going to figure out how I do it. So our thoughts create our feelings, like we've talked about, what we think creates how we feel. And that feeling then 
drives our action or inaction. So we will take action, but it doesn't matter nearly as much as we think we do because we can take actions that look like we're taking actions toward a goal and still not create that goal because our thoughts and our feelings do not align with that goal. So I'm going to talk to you more about that next week, but let's just talk about a quick example from what I see with a lot of my clients. So in my group program, we create amazing goals together with my clients. And whenever we are talking about creating their goal, they immediately all want to go to doing more. I think this is just a human tendency. As they set a what their mind thinks is a higher goal, let's say they want to double their revenue or double something in their business, or they want to half the amount of time that they're working but still make the same amount, they immediately think that they need to do a ton more and they pack in (laughs) the actions. This is when they're thinking they need to have a YouTube channel, have a Pinterest board, have a Facebook group, have a new platform for community, and then they also need to send out postcards and flyers and do a webinar and also create a cheap course that will then lead to these other leads joining their thing, whatever. They build in all of this action into it in order to think that all of that will add up and create their goal. But that's never the case because adding all of those actions, like packing the actions in like that, is coming from a thought and feeling combination that is from scarcity. So when we, if we don't have the belief that we can create the goal, then we're going to, of course, add in all the action and rely on the action to create our results rather than using our minds and using our intuitions or inner voices in order to create whatever it is that we desire. And we'll talk about this more next week when we talk about where done goals come from. So I'm excited to talk to you more about that. But for this week, I want you to think about what if you believed 100% that you are going to create whatever it is, the goal that you want to create. Think about what that is. I want you to think about that goal. What do you want? And if for you, the word goal, you don't really like that, I want you to think about what is it in my life that I don't have right now that I want to have? What do I want to change? What would I like to embody? Is it maybe like a more ideal schedule that you want to be able to have? Is it an amount of money that you want to be able to have? Is it more time with your family? Is it more time to contribute via some other method other than your business? Whatever it is, think about that and ask yourself, if I truly believed that it was 100% possible for me Like it was, we went to the future. I always say this to my clients, like we had a crystal ball and we could go to the future and say, yes, you for sure created that. And then we came back to present day and we had you create the plan to get from here to there. You knew it was happening regardless of what you were doing. Of course, you're going to do things because you know you created that. And there is some doing involved, but if you knew that and you were coming from it with ease, confidence, calmness, what would be your initial plan to get there? Of course, there are going to be some twists and turns that will happen along the way, but we know that you created it, so that won't even be a problem. If you knew that, how would you go about creating what you're doing right now? Would it become a lot more simplified? Probably, right? Because you're thinking, well, I created it. I might as well enjoy the process and I might as well only do the things that are 
essential or effective in creating that? Would you have a totally different energy as you go about creating it? Most likely. So think about that and we'll talk more next week. Before we go there though, I really want to invite you to figure out your inbox. How's your inbox looking? I created this awesome guide, this PDF download called Select All, (laughs) and it will help you not only create inbox zero to start with, but maintain it because that's really what matters is maintaining an inbox that's not wildly out of control so that when you wake up Monday morning and you open your inbox, hopefully after you've done some deeper work, then you can easily see what's happening in your inbox and you don't have to constantly be thinking, oh my gosh, I can't find this or look at this giant number badge on my email app. And you can just feel a lot calmer and not feel like you immediately need to hire an assistant to handle your email. You can later if you want, but let's get your email under control now and have you feel really confident about what's going on in there. In order to do so, I'll just need your email haha, to, <laughs> to send you the guide, and then you'll be able to receive my weekly notes, which are always amazing little bits of coaching that you don't want to miss out on that are different than what you're hearing on the podcast. So to opt in, you will go to vivere.co, so that's V-I-V-E-R-E, dot co forward slash email. That's vivere.co forward slash email. We'll have it in the show notes. And until next time, I hope you make it an amazing week. And I can't wait to talk to you about where done goals come from next week. Bye. Bye.